Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, PaintballProps.com, and EscapeRoomElectronics.com. This is a two-part video series showing you how to import your Arduino projects over to a printed circuit board, an empty proto board. Now this video will serve to help beginners who are interested in programming their uh, Atmega 328PU chips from their Arduino Uno and bringing the important hardware over to a proto board so that you can power the proto board and do exactly what you'd be doing with your Arduino Uno only be it on your own board for science projects or independent projects whatever you'd like it's also serving as a uh, a precursor tutorial uh, video series for my upcoming Kickstarter called the Arduino Playbot which I'll have released in about a month and a half. In any case, today we're going to talk about the schematic of what's needed from here to bring over here and tomorrow I'm going to release the second video which talks about, which will show me populating this board and testing it. And for this project we're just going to upload the basic Blink software uh, under examples in your uh, Arduino Uno GUI. But first things first, let's have a look at the schematic. I've broken the schematic up into two parts. On the left, we've got our power supply circuitry, which is essentially our input power, our input voltage, and our regulation circuitry. We're using a 78055 volt regulator for this and a few capacitors. Now we're going to talk about this first, but on the right, we've got our Atmega 328PU chip with a, a reset button, the crystal oscillator circuitry, the power supply circuitry, and a simple 470 ohm resistor with a, a red LED. So first of all, let's talk about the power supply circuitry on the left. The power supply circuit is very simple. What we want to do is turn 9 volts into 5 volts. On the left, we've got our input terminal block or power jack. We're going to be using a terminal block when we populate the uh, printed circuit board tomorrow. Now, there's two pins here that we're going to be using, V+, plus, which is our positive 9 volt line, we'll be using 9 volts, and that's connected to the pin 1 of a 7805 5 volt regulator. The GND pin of the terminal block is connected to the ground line. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the screen that there are 5 GND indicators. That means that all of those indicators, those points, are all connected together. So anything you see in this entire video that has GND on it, that GND indicator, means they're all connected together. There is a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor connected between uh, pin 1 of the 7805 and the ground line. Pin 2 of the 7805 is connected to the ground line as well. Now you'll notice pin 3 is connected to a couple capacitors, a 0 0.1 uh, microfarad ceramic capacitor and a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. And those two, the, second, the, the secondary sides are all connected to ground. Uh, you'll also see the VCC line. VCC is a 5 volt line. It is our indicator for 5 volts. Anything you see with that VCC indicator means that it is connected to the output of the 7805 in this video. So again, we'll, we'll put 9 volts on pin 1, pin 2 is grounded, and pin 3 we'll see a regulated 5 volts, which is safe to power our Atmega 328PU chip. So now let's talk about the main schematic. This is a little bit more complicated, but first of all, let's talk about the chip. The Atmega 328PU chip has 28 pins. From the lower left, we've got pin 1, which is RST, which is our reset line. The bottom rightmost pin is pin 14. The upper rightmost pin is pin 15 and the upper leftmost pin is pin 28. So from reset, we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way over to the right. And then 15 from the upper right will count 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 to the left. So we've got 28 pins. And they're all labeled um, the pins that you'd see uh, on your Arduino Uno. We've got RST, which is obviously the reset line. We've got uh, GPIO 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We've got our first VCC line, which is where we will connect 5 volts. We've got our ground line, which is connected to the ground, the, the ground terminal. And then we've got our crystal oscillator circuit. The crystal oscillator circuit uses X1 and X2 pins. And we've got a crystal oscillator between those two pins with, uh, with two 18 picofarad capacitors connected to ground. Now, those 18 picofarad capacitors can be 18 to 22 picofarads. I'm going to be using 18 picofarads for this video. And then what that crystal oscillator does is it acts to clock. It adds to add uh, a 16 megahertz clock to the chip. Without that oscillator circuit, uh, it's not going to work. The, the chip is not going to work. It's a key part of this, uh, of, this, uh, of this circuit. Now, you'll notice that all of the GPIO pins are empty with exception to GPIO 13 on the upper right. But anyway, before we get to that, we'll talk about VCC2. We've got 
VCC2 connected to the 5 volt line as well, VCC, and we've got our second ground line connected to also to the ground line. Now, our reset circuit. You can tie this, you can tie pin 1 directly to 5 volts if you'd like, but what I've added here is a pull-up resistor. So that pull-up resistor is rated for 10 kilo ohms, and uh, so that's pulled high. So we see 5 volts on that line, and once we press the reset button, it shorts that that 5 volts down to ground, but it's not a direct short because we've got a current limiting resistor on the pull-up line to the 5 volt line. So we're, it's protected. So when every time you want to reset the program, you press the reset button and it shorts the reset line to ground. Very simple. You don't need it, but we're going to use it for our video. Now, the rest of the circuit is very simple. We've got uh, a current limiting resistor of 470 ohms, 470R, which is R1 in the upper right, connected to the anode or the positive of our first LED, our only LED. And the cathode, the negative of the LED, is connected to the ground line. So when we turn pin 13 on, when we set pin 13 to 5 volts, the current limiting resistor limits the current to the LED so the LED doesn't burn out and uh, power flows through it to the ground line lighting the LED up. When, pin thir when GPIO 13 is cleared, 0 volts, we don't see the LED light up. So when we program in our Blink software, what will happen is when we place the chip from our Arduino Uno into our socket, it's just going to blink LED 1. And this is just going to show you that the program is successfully running with our circuit. So our next video uh, will be a little bit longer than this one. And what we're going to do with it is we are going to populate all of this onto that empty prototyping PCB. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Have a great day, everyone.